to Karate Combat. We are once again in 1980s Hollywood, California for another evening of Full Contact Karate. As always, my name is Josh Palmer, joined by Bas Rutten and Leila Annalee. Yeah, and tonight we've got a title fight. Edgar Screamers takes on Bruno Aziz, two fighters with very different styles and both undefeated. And both of them vying for this coveted 68 kilo Karate Combat golden belt in a fight that we are all dying to see. Before we get to that, however, Bas Rutten is with some of our fans here tonight to see what they think of the action. Bass, what, what, what is going on? Oh, this dude needs to chill. It's just a misunderstanding. This guy believes that I was picking a fight with an audience member. I can talk about it if you want, but then we're going to be stuck in the 80s. Hey, 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 who's bullying our fans? I have no clue, but can you please help me out here? Yeah, I guess so. Jeez. Well. Get the copper, get the copper, get the copper, get the copper! While Josh sorts out that minor problem, why don't you and I check out our main event preview? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh my god, what are you doing to me? I'm Edgar's the Bear Slayer Screavers, and I'm fighting a hungry and aggressive Brazilian. Olá pessoal, meu nome é Bruno Assis, eu sou do Brasil, conhecido aqui como o Dragão Branco do Karate Combate e estou pronto para lutar pela Golden Belt do Karate Combate. He's undefeated. He's number one in the line. You line them up and I smash him. E não vou desistir até o final. Essa luta vai ser nossa, eu tenho certeza disso e vou fazer o meu melhor dentro do pit. In my mindset, I'm a challenger coming here to attack, not to defend. Nessa luta eu vou começar com quatro vitórias e zero derrota. And destroy him with my pressure. E eu tenho certeza que eu vou continuar invicto, vou continuar nessa nessa jornada que estou fazendo. It's gonna be a good, explosive and exciting fight, and you should definitely tune in. That is of course the main event that we have to look forward to tonight for our golden title belt. Uh, Bass, you okay? You've got everything resolved there for you? It was just a misunderstanding. You know, I wasn't that guy. I do believe that I know who actually was the bad guy, but I don't want to stir things back up. Well, I'm glad I can help, but uh, why don't we go ahead and take a look at all the other action that's coming your way tonight on Karate Combat. So before our main events, we are going to see a 68 kilo bout between Ecuadorian Daniel Viveros and uh, Portugal's Vitali Sertan. We do, however, open tonight's card with a catchweight ladies bout at 62 kilos between Venezuelan Omira Molina and Brazilian Erica Santos. As always, let's remind ourselves of the rules of the pit. Our scoring system is uniquely based on the principles of karate, which are effective striking, effective takedowns, aggressiveness, and defense. Meaning that if a fight is close and it's up to the judges to decide, the fighter who drove the action wins. Fighters are also encouraged to use our specially designed 45 degree angled pit walls to their advantage. Fighters cannot use knees or elbows and only five seconds of ground and pound is allowed. All bouts tonight are taking place over three three-minute rounds, unless the need to go into overtime is deemed necessary, or if it's a title fight, which consists of five three-minute rounds. My name is Omaira, I'm from Venezuela, but I live currently in New York. My opponent is from Brazil. I grew up in a school of karate. Karate has been part of my life, diaria. If I was a professional professional, Seguiría practicando artes marciales, ya que eso es parte de mi vida. Ay, me gustan las artes marciales. Yo soy Erika Santos, yo vim do Brasil, de São Paulo. Yo voy a luchar contra Omaira Molina. Eh, ella es una gran adversaria, ya conozco a ella de otras competiciones y tengo certeza que va a ser una lucha dura. Ella tiene que se preocupar en no recibir mi golpe, porque si ella recibe, la chance de ser un nocaute es muy grande. O mi golpe favorito es el directo de derecha, eh, porque yo soy más rápida y más fuerte. Con... Cuando yo entrar en el pitch, yo voy a ir para vencer. Lo que me hace peligroso para mi oponente es que yo entrego todo mi corazón y, y garra dentro del pit. Lo que me hace perigosa para mi oponente es mi voluntad incansable de vencer. Y, y bueno, eh, entregando todo por todo dentro del pit.
For the first time tonight, the portal opens up and we welcome Omira Molina in the white pants and red gloves and Erica Santos in the black pants and the blue gloves. Oh, she's fired up. Oh yes, very excited, both these ladies to be here tonight. Caracas, Venezuela meets Sao Vicente, Brazil. There we see Tell of the Tape for La Guerrera. 2 0 here on Karate Combat. Last time out, it'd be a good decision win over Anna Laura Prasotti. And there we see debutante Erica Santos here for the first time on Karate Combat. A very accomplished Karateka throughout the Pan Am and South American Games, though. Now, Bass, as we look to get underway here in round number one, both these ladies are aware of each other. They've uh, been around a lot of the same competitions, but due to different weight classes, have never actually met before. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how much they've taken from watching each other fight before. Yeah, you saw Santos wanted to shake hands, but Ma Molina, she said, no, it's not going to happen. Whoa, very oh, nice. Oh, and getting it. short shots in there, getting stuck oh, in. Oh, oh. don't Ta fight Akiyama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, you can't hold and punch, but they were going to give it a go anyway. Referee Sam Amini has to get stuck in there and break them up. And Molina Bass. was super composed until that <laughs> happened, and then she completely went back to the first game. Oh, both last these time. ladies have come to throw down, and there we go, clinching up again. Short shots on the inside. Looks for the throw. The right hands keep working. Oh, back to guard here. Nice counter, taking and countering. I love that. That's what I do. So you got to count, counter that uh, kick with a nice right straight. Exactly what she did. That's why I always say, don't set it up with a single kick because it can simply take it and counter all the time. 70% of the knockouts are because of that. Lead. I love how close their lead hands are to each other, Bass. It's like, it's, it's how, yeah, how much range can we keep without really keeping range? <laughs> Oh, oh, nice head right hand, another nice right, right hand. hand. Oh. There we go, she eats two. Molina's doing great. Santos is rumbled. Just let go, push your waist, let's create distance. Oh, and Santos was in trouble there for a couple of times. She yeah, had yeah. two good rear straights. It looked like she was dazed. Now simple, left straight to the body, right straight to the head. Will do wonders. Molina actually putting her whole training camp uh, from Venezuela, actually now in oh, New York, beautiful. and that's a huge shot! Wow, that is crazy, Santos beautiful, is beautiful shot! What a beautiful Very straight nice. shot from Omira Molina. She is going to take a clean, decisive win here. Wow, that was beautifully timed. She came in and kaboom, right on the button there. You see, as she said it, she wanted to use more space this time. Don't be too, too, that close. Let's take a look back at that knockout. Look at the laser focus Boom. and bang. Right hand straight on the chin and aggression to follow up as well. Santos not able to recover. Boom, she comes in. Oh man, this uh, is going way all the way back to the first show that we had, <laughs> right? What was it, the was it our fifth show? Boom. Ooh. Look at that, Santos's head was already slightly turning as she came in. Yep. Ate that fully to the, the side of the jaw. Our referee, no choice there but to stop the bout. Lovely, clean technique from yeah. Amira Molina. Kidakos, remember, he did that as well. Yes, he did. Okay, that was also the first night fight of the night. What a start to karate combat here for tonight's action. Amira Molina watching her opponent get uh, her medical checks. Nice. We're going to go down to the center of the pit here and get the official decision. Standing victory for Venezuelan Omira Molina. Her training camp up in 
Yonkers, New York paying dividends there. She's going to head up pit side and get a few words with Leila Annerley. Ahead of this fight, you said you wanted to show your discipline and clean technique. You did exactly that. How do you feel? Me siento muy contenta por el trabajo realizado junto con mi coach. Gracias por confiar en mí. Todas mis peleas se las dedico a mi hermano, que en paz descanse, mi familia. Y la verdad, la chica de Brasil, una guerrera, como siempre lo digo, siempre respeto a mi oponente. Trabajé duro y fui bastante disciplinada y seguiré trabajando humildemente para la próxima pelea que de Karate Kumba me dé nuevamente la oportunidad. Beautiful, beautiful clean knockout. Thank you very much. Congrats. Amara Melina victorious there. Robin, what did you see for that beautiful straight punch? You know, you can see karate everywhere you look. And in fact, you can see karate even in the sport of hockey. And that's what we saw when <laughs> Mon uh, Melina and Erica had each other and they were just pumping and pulling. That looked like a hockey fight. Not quite legal, but then what happened? She created the space and everything she was doing was to set up that straight right hand. The low kicks to set it up and just using it, using it. Walked her into it, bink, and put her down. Yes, a beautiful knockout for the Venezuelan bass. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the action from that fight. These yeah. ladies got stuck in right Ooh. from the start. That was right away from the get already. Now we go here. Takiyama don't fry style. Boom, boom. If you don't know what we're talking about, go on YouTube. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> now. Several Touch times, though, they, they had this exchange in the middle, and it was Omira Molina who just got the cleaner of the strikes. Look at the intensity oh. in her face. That was a beautiful shot. But, you know, like Robin said, you saw her setting it up. She was constantly working for it. Something 100%. That was a, a game plan. 3 0 for Amara Molina. Loads more action to come here on Karate Combat. Join us again shortly. Me gusta empezar mi día entrenando aquí. Me da paz. A veces la ciudad puede volverse un tanto caótica, así que disfruto el silencio de este lugar. Bueno, vengo desde abajo. Mi familia no tenía mucho dinero, así que tuvo que emigrar para buscar trabajo. A los nueve años encontré a Karate, encontré a mi sensei, y ellos me ayudaron a ser la persona que soy hoy. El karate me abrió muchas puertas, me permitió estudiar, me permitió prepararme, me enseñó cómo manejar mi vida y me mantuvo lejos de problemas. Bueno, crecí en uno de los peores barrios de Quito. Eh, al convertirme en atleta de alto rendimiento, con eso mejoró mi economía, pude salir de ese lugar, pude mudarme a un lugar mejor, un lugar de clase media, que ahora es del cual disfruto. Okay. Desde pequeño siempre me gustó la historia, me gustó la geografía, la historia sobre guerra, eh, la historia sobre estrategia. Me gustó mucho lo que, la estrategia que se utilizó para ganar la Segunda Guerra Mundial, para ganar la guerra de Irak. Eso me llamó mucho la atención y trato de aplicarlo eso día con día. Gracias. La estrategia para mí es importantísima. Trato de conectar la estrategia de la guerra con mi estilo de pelea. Porque si no tienes estrategia, no puedes ganar. He ganado cada título que me he propuesto, cada medalla. Lo único que quiero ahora es la adrenalina de Karate Combat y quiero ese cinturón dorado. Ok, ¿cómo te lo explico? Tomas un trozo de carbón, lo sometes a mucha presión y ¡bam! Tienes un diamante. Ese soy yo, un diamante negro. Eu conquisto o oceano como conquisto os meus oponentes. Torno fluido como as ondas. Uma vez que compreendes e respeitas a natureza da fera, consegues superá-la. 
Quando me mudei para Portugal, comecei a surfar. Um dia entrei no mar, aparentemente calmo. Quando as ondas vieram, vi o verdadeiro tamanho. Uma onda grande puxou para o fundo do mar, não conseguia respirar. Pensei que ia morrer, mas mantive a calma e consegui superar isso. Essa experiência fez mais forte, fez-me perder o medo, mas nunca o respeito. E agora, o mar é a minha casa. Nasci na Moldávia, entre a Ucrânia e a Roménia. Com sete anos, entrei no evento de luta clandestina, onde o prémio era um chocolate. No final desse evento, tive que esconder a minha t-shirt e ser aguentada dos meus pais. Mas acreditem que no final da luta, eu trouxe aquele chocolate para casa. Aos oito anos, inscrevi-me no Karatá. Adorei tudo aquilo e não me safava nada mal. E também comecei a praticar parkour. Por isso é que me começaram a chamar de Ninja. Vim para Portugal aos 12 anos e foi aí que conheci meu mestre e segundo pai, o mestre Vitor Poças. Ele ajudou-me a tornar um homem e compreende exatamente o que é que um jovem precisa para ter sucesso. E ele é meu mentor e ele é meu mestre. As palavras que ele me disse e que eu encaro como regras para a vida são nunca, nunca desistas. Se não te esforçares, nunca vais saber quão longe poderás chegar. Quando entrei para o Karate Combat, tive que mudar a minha estratégia. Sempre quis lutar full contact. E este era o meu sonho. Por exemplo, no Karate Combat, um KO é um KO. Com apenas um golpe, posso ganhar um combate. Eu só precisava ser um guerreiro. O meu combate no One World Trade Center foi incrível. Eu senti que não tinha experiência. Os meus pontapés, os meus socos e a minha estratégia precisavam ser afinados. Não me arrependo de nada naquele combate. Três rounds, três minutos, não é para todos. No Karate é por pontos. Sempre que marcamos um, combate par. No Karate Combat, esse termino é muito importante. Quando entras no pit, ou comes ou és comida. Quando lutei com o Gabriel Sera, eu sabia o que tinha que fazer. Ele estava melhor do que no último combate de ele em Nova York, mas eu tinha que estar melhor que ele. Tinha que ter a certeza que levava o chocolate para casa. Cheers! Yes, welcome back to Karate Combat Bass. What a way to start off uh, this evening's event. Good boy on the button, out. Yeah, let it never be said that the ladies cannot uh, put that kind of power down. Uh, we are going to move swiftly on in the 68 kilo men's division. We've got Daniel Viveros taking on Vitaly Sertan. And Viveros, someone who said he's had a much more improved fight camp with a lot more, lot more focus on sparring this time. Well, before we saw Bolsters taking somebody down and knocking him out with the takedown. This time, he focused on boxing, Thai boxing, and especially on the uppercut. He said he had great preparation because he did a hundred rounds of sparring for this uh, fight. Yeah, and he's coming uh, down in weight class a bit. And so, of course, is his opponent tonight, uh, Vitaly Sertan, one on one here on Karate Combat, looking to move up to two and one. Yes, because now he fights also much closer to his natural weight, unlike last time, so he's going to feel much better. He says that he wants his opponent to feel his confidence. He said he worked on six combinations, and says one of those combinations is going to seal the deal. Well, let's see if it does. We're going to take a look at the head-to-head -head for Daniel Viveros and Vitaly Sertan. Eh, mi nombre es Daniel Vivero, soy de Quito, Ecuador. Bueno, voy a pelear con Vitali Sertán, eh, de Portugal. Es un competidor rápido, hábil, pero ya lo tenemos controlado para, para el combate. Aprecar es mi, mi, mi especialidad. Esta lucha es importante porque me va a permitir seguir avanzando para, para obtener un, un lugar para poder pelear por el cinturón dorado. Meu nome é Vital Sertan, sou natural da Moldávia e represento Portugal. Eu vou lutar com Daniel Viveiros. Ele é um bom atleta, uma boa pessoa. Sei que ele gosta muito de estratégias de guerra. O que faz-me perigoso para o meu oponente é as minhas mãos, é as minhas pernas, é as minhas projeções, é a minha estratégia, praticamente tudo. Quando entrar no pit, eu vou lá para ganhar divertir-me e dar muito show. Quando entro no en pit, vou a destroçar a meu oponente. 
Se eu não fosse um lutador profissional, eu seria um bailarino. We welcome to the pit Daniel Viveros and the showman Vitali Sertan <laughs> looking to put on a show here tonight. Sertan with a very acrobatic style. I think you're going to see an enjoy in this one. Yeah, he's super fast. Super duper fast. Great kicks, great power. Speed, accuracy. <laughs> And that is the very imposing figure of Daniel Viveros. Taylor Tate Fim, as you can see, a one and three record here at Karate Combat. He's just fallen the wrong side of a couple of decisions, uh, but very capable of stopping the fight at any moment. And this is the tail of the tape for Vitali Sertan, originally from Chisinau, Moldova and stuntman, no stranger to the karate combat pit. Our referee for this second bout of the night is Mr. Kevin Sataki. As he gets us underway here, white pants for Daniel Viveros, black pants for Vitali Sertan. And immediately looking for the feints, southpaw for Viveros. And they are measuring, fighting for position on that lead hand. So often, of course, that southpaw versus orthodox fight is for uh, outside foot position. Try and really activate the, the rear power side by getting outside of the opponent. Sertan firing high kick. As we said, very dynamic fighter. But Viveros, so much power. Yeah. Crazy body uh, slam. Body lock out. slam, yeah, yes. against Stefanos Rupakos. Big tie up here, and... here's the body lock, big pick oh, up, yeah. and oh, not quite able. <laughs> yeah, Sultana's smiling at him, he's not going to do that. I think he knew how to kind of distribute his weight and hook the leg there. Able to stop the elevation. Yeah, Sertan had uh, some trials and tribulations in training. He said he really focused on the 80-20 principle. What could he really nail down with the key things that were going to give him the most benefit? And it's good shots from oh. Viveros. Look, there we go, ducked underneath, <laughs> Matrix style. Yeah, looking into a headlock oh, throw, nice, nice reversal. <laughs> Sling Sertan to the ground. Again, we see the power in the clinch from Viveros. You know, it's interesting. Sertan had said that he felt that grappling in the clinch would exhaust a lot of uh, Karatekas who don't put their energy there, and that's something he tried to to work very hard on, but of course he's facing someone in Daniel Viveros who we know has power in the clip. Yeah. This is oh, one nice axe oh. kick. Kato Giri. Yeah, ducks underneath. This could be a fight where we see a double knockout. <laughs> right, every time they Good, right? swing the same, the same shot, watch. Of course, I'm not gonna do it anymore now. <laughs> you cursed yourself, Mr. Rudin. Sertan, center of the pit here, looking to bob and weave with the head, mirrored by Viveros. Whoa, big, wild punches, big throwing right with here. as much power as he can. Viveros unable to plant his lead leg effectively there and puts himself down. Both wanted to go for a takedown, it looked like that. Nice, some screenshots there. That's Sertan. Turn around, turn around. Fight! Touching close. Gloves. Ooh. That was well masked by yeah. Zertan, but oh, a huge pickup. Oh, that's another crazy pickup. Yeah, he looked down and he was kicking high. I mean, it, it's one thing to take someone down, but to do it with amplitude and really plant them and you know use the earth as a weapon is something quite else. Nice low kick there. See, both have a stance now. Normally it was an open stance, so that means one was the South Korean, the other orthodox. Now right away with that normal stance, the same, you land at low kick. Throwing right to the end of round number one there, both men. Retreat to their corners to regroup. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the replays here. Bass, talk us through the action. Yeah, both of them were, were kind of... Whoa, look at that beautiful take of the, the beautiful swing. 
that resulted in a reversal, but now Viveros is taking it over. That was a great defense there from the bottom, up kicking. Boom, look at that, he was just waiting. You know he worked on that stuff. Look at this, beautifully, grabs the legs, kaboom, into the ground. You'll cough up a lung like that. So we're going to take a look in the corner of Vitaly Sertan, just regrouping. Bass, what do you think his corner is telling him right now? Yeah, make sure that he doesn't throw you like that anymore. Because uh, you see him breathing heavy. That could be from the slam, I'm telling you, because all your muscles, they get such a shock. And breathing is done by, well, the muscles, not the lungs, right? They're just too bad. So once you stop those muscles and you freak them out, it's harder to expand. Let's go, let's go. And seconds called out here. Referee Kevin Sasaki is going to get us back underway. Another three minutes on the clock. Daniel Viveros, Vitaly Sertan earned respect between these two. Viveros again straight back to Southpaw stance. Whoa, that was and a nice circle. Heavy combination, good front kick, but lovely straight shots and reply. Throwing a kind of right hook, kind of right uppercut. You know, they're, they're striking every time simultaneously, it looks like. That's why I said, you know, there might be a double knockout coming. Nice rear kick up the open side from Sertan. It meets the guard, but you really don't want to take too much of that on the forearms. Oh, nice kick. Just there. Next to the knee. Very oh, effective. Interesting jab to the body. Nice yep. shots from Sertan. I follow it up with a cross. Nice. There's a split shot there. And that's a good combination, ending the punches with a kick. Nice long, one-two counter. I mean, they are trading shot for shot here. You go, I'll go. Yep, and you saw a certain kicking and right away get countered by Fidros. Oh, changes Whoa! the distance on the Let's hook kick. Again. Lovely pick up. He seemed to be able to do that without even being connected to him. He's got a strong core. And he just lifts people like it's nothing. against that kick. He's aiming because every kick is on the same spot. Yeah, so it's doing a good job of working all target areas here. Well, body head, now probably going to be a body head, you know? Right straight to the body and left to the head. And I say straight if I have a square stance. A square. Oh! oh! Big kick from Sertan lands, he's flurrying. And he needs to pop up to his feet here. Those shots have yep. to be delivered from a standing position. He cannot be on his knees when he throws them. And that's a, a lucky recovery for Viveros, who almost eats another head kick. Oh, Shot to oh. the body. Sertan is trying to keep this momentum going here, is he? Uppercut there. Lovely sprawl to stop nice. the uh, attempted takedown. Very clean defense from Vitaly Sertan. And this, with a minute left in this second round, is very firmly swinging his way. Nice left hook, but it grazed, it glanced. It's a full impact. A right front kick, both with front kicks. Oh, that was a, a nice leg. overhand left, actually landed to the body. Front kicks are very effective now, with, with the back leg, I mean. Oh, that oh, was, look at that. Little, little question, mark. question mark kick, really held it at the midpoint. Kick to a jab. I mean, Sertan is really upping the tempo here. The work rate's really impressive. There's that body shot again for Viveros. We're moving into the final 20 seconds here. Josh Palmer, Bass Rutten bringing you all the action here from Pitside at Karate Combat. Final 10 seconds in this bout, or round number two of this bout, should I say. Yeah, Sertan is a little bit too greedy, so to say. He's oh. closing the distance too fast and it jams his own punches. Yeah, he attempted a sacrifice throw from Daniel Viveros, something I don't think we've ever seen in Karate Combat before, but unsuccessful there. There wow, round, what a short sure to Sertan. Bus. So yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a 1-1-1, one, one, one. no. So let's take a look back at some of these replays. And this was a huge slam bass. Look how Whoopa. much elevation. Yeah. Without barely being connected to it. Now watch this, this is the high kick coming. Splash. <laughs> oh, Ooh, no guard. Beautiful. And I think uh, Viveros was a little bit lucky here that he managed to tie Sertan up and Sertan wasn't able to really stand up and posture over him able to just regain his composure. Beautiful question mark kick. Some lovely work from Vitaly Sertan in round number two. What are you going to tell Daniel Viveros in his corner, Bass, about uh, regrouping for this one? Well, add a straight, add a cross to your body shot the whole time. He's setting it up, though, in the first two rounds, but now it's go low for the body and go with a cross to the head, see if you can land it. Well done. 
Bring it. Round number three is underway here. Final three minutes on the clock. Daniel Viveros in the white pants, Vitaly Sazan in the black. And they immediately start trading again. Oh, nice counter of a single kick, you see, every time. Both the same stance now. Vivros likes to throw a low kick now with the back leg. Yeah, not anymore. He did it in round one. Very, very smart. Great body Sertan. kick. Sense with the cage oh, here, trying to keep the momentum going, and he's rocked in with that high right kick. And you see he set it up with that right body kick first, and then the second time it was a high kick. And again, Viveros manages to just about campaign his, uh, regain his composure, but that's the second clean head kick that he's eaten here. And it's always up that open side, isn't it? The opposing stances leaves that open oh. side for the rear power kick. Oh, nice. You gotta watch out though, you're gonna hurt your foot. If you kick a knee like that with your foot, with tiny little foot bones, compared to the knee. It's interesting, both these guys actually said they know each other quite well. They're, they're very friendly out of the pit, but they know inside it's all business and they're more than capable of separating that friendship. Yeah, that's what simply happens. I have a Kosaka, I walked into the dressing room, I said, listen, I'm going to try to knock you out, hope you do the same thing to me. Afterwards, <laughs> we drink a beer. Cool? He goes, cool. Whoa, big right hand there. It lands again. You know, Vitaly Sertan also said to us that he felt the difference last time was he didn't really have confidence oh, in his game. Right it's kick. another right high kick. Sits Viveros down. Sertan trying to land the punches. And wow. again, Viveros is just able to tie one limb up long enough to recover, trying to measure and oh. immediately again opening up. Yeah, the pressure Sertan. from Sertan. I mean, what I was going to say is he said he felt he needed to have more confidence in his game. And Bass, this, this guy's exuding confidence here. Yeah, she does it again. The body and then the high kick. Oh. And he lands it over and over. Oh, three, three, he's going to kick four. the body now. I think Sertan's found a formula he likes here. And it's working. Oh, oh yes. Viveros is down again. Is he going to be able to recover? And Kevin Sataki no, calls again. a stop. Wow. Vitaly Sertan victorious over Daniel Whoa. Viveros. The last minute, he stops him. 50 seconds left on the clock in round number three. Just relentless was Sertan Bas over and over, went to the well with that head kick. Wow. And it, 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 the first right high kick, and then the second one was a right body kick, and then a right high kick. And then in the last round, he did the same thing. Right body kick, boom, another right high kick. After he already let in another kick, so I think he kicked it four times in the head. Some good work from Vitaly Sertan. Daniel Viveros receiving the medical attention he needs. You know, Sertan had also pointed out that he wanted to try and land far more combinations than he had before. And I think we saw that, Bass, really looking to put the sequences together rather than just uh, the single shots. Yeah, the problem with what he had, though, he was a little bit too greedy, that I always say. He wants to bring too much emotion and he closes the distance too fast. And here's the That's finish. And at the end of the day, left. it wasn't the kicks that did it. It was a left straight as he was surging forward, covering so much distance. One more look at the finish here. That oh, left hand, nice yeah. and clean. I mean, to be fair, the right landed first as well. So you see, I think because he was jamming himself before, it's because Viveros didn't move backwards. Now he did move backwards and he got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we have your winner by TKO! Good camaraderie there from our two fighters. A comprehensive performance for Vitaly Sertan. Improves his record to two and two here at Karate Combat as he thanks the crowd. He's going to head up pit side and get a few words with Leila Anna Lee. Um, congratulations. Your opponent caught a couple of the kicks early on, but you didn't give up on those. They were clearly part of the game plan. Bem, uh, o plano era outro, mas nós conseguimos adaptar, que é isso que faz um lutador bom se adaptar rápido no momento. E com a ajuda do Marcos, meu treinador, correu super bem a estratégia e apostava no que é que estava a funcionar. Como costuma dizer, a equipa que ganha não muda, golpes que acertam não mudam. Congratulations, well done. Parabéns. Muito obrigado, Rússia. E agora, como eu costumo dizer, eu vou levar 
o meu chocolate para casa. Obrigado. Taking his chocolate home. <laughs> a well earned chocolate. Parabéns. Victory chocolate for uh, Vitaly Sertan. Robin, give us your thoughts on uh, that young man's handiwork. Yeah, man, that was sick. Yes, we saw one weapon repeatedly. We saw that rear kick, but this young man is a liar as well. Misdirection, he would use different ways to set it up. Sometimes the hand to set up the kick, sometimes the fake kick to the body. He hid the kick and he presented it in different ways over and over again until he finally set it up. And then, just when you're now worried about the kick, bink, he hit you with the hand. That was a thing of beauty. Relentless and deceptive combinations there as we're going to see taking a look back at the full montage from that bow. Boom! There's the first. We get taken down now. Slam the bam. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. He, he ate a few good, oh. good slams and good exchanges there, didn't he? Yep. And he hit again. Look at that. But nevertheless, he kept there driving forward, and that was a beautiful kick. Clean as you like it, but he was very rarely able to get enough ground and pound off. He it didn't was, have enough space. Yeah. He needed to stand up. Viveros did a good job of shutting him down and, and defending after he was on the ground. But let's take one last look at this finish here. Bass, talk us through the ending one more time. Boom. Head kick. Well, that says it all. He's going down. But then, no, no, no. We're going to get to finish with the hands, right? That's the one, see? Smack under smack. Now he's creating space, you see? Now he's standing, has room for his punches. That's why they were so effective. Non-stop action here at Karate Combat. Main event is coming your way very shortly. Don't go anywhere. My name is Bruno Cis, I'm from Brazil, and I found the key to happiness. The key opened the doors to karate combat. Here in Brazil, the karate is very big, and I want to be a big star. I make up, and I go to the park for running. I like to do everything to the relation about fighting. I like to study my openings. I like to watch a movie about fighting. I like to copy the movement. When I was tired, I returned to my house and sleeping because this time my objective is only training and study for my family. He treats me as well and trains very well. It's a gift for my sensei because he collects his samurai words. People think I am crazy because every time I have a punch, I smile. I smile because I absorb your energy and give back the energy from my opponent. I don't consider karate my profession because they say when you love your job, it's no longer a job. I feel it. It's not a job for me. I have a natural energy, have it flows in every cell of my body. I can't get enough words for express my love for karate. When I start speaking, I never stop. My nickname is White Dragon. I think it fits me because I like to sleep and I like to fight, but I like to split fire. <laughs> The dragon is a symbol of power, strength, and honor. Every time I enter the pit is my classroom. Every opponent is my teacher. Every hit is a lesson I learn. If you wake up the dragon, be prepared for the URL owl, because dragons usually don't lose. I remember my first fight. It was here on the streets where I grew up. That first punch, that first pain, teaches you determination, puts you in place. The question is, will you get up or stay down? Your determination and stubbornness, staying true to yourself, what makes a difference when pain is all you feel. Religion calms my mind, 
and give me strength. It gives me purpose and understanding of universe. I had a problem once with another league before karate combat. I picked up this song, but it ended up being used by extremist group. This wasn't my intention. The Holy Quran teaches that whoever kills an innocent life, it is as if he has killed all mankind. And whoever saves a person, it is as if he has saved all mankind. I ended up leaving the league and signed with Karate Combat, which has been one of the greatest opportunities for me. Now I'm the first one in Karate Combat to hold the belt. I train hard, enjoy martial arts lifestyle, and the results come by itself. Some may think that I'm a serious person, but that's the way I am when I can get ready for a fight. Outside of that, I like to be humble and easygoing person. I was the smallest kid in my class, so I had to fight for myself. My parents gave me nickname, the Bear Slayer. It's our national hero, which represents our freedom and never surrendering. I like helping people. I earned my degree in sports physiotherapy and work with other fighters to get over injuries. It's satisfying to help out my fellow fighters. But mostly I train. I train for my next fight. I have been in the toughest places on earth. And my toughest opponent is always me, myself. I bring all of that experience in the karate combat pit which will keep me the champion. Welcome back, pit side here at Karate Combat Fast. Non-stop action so far. It's been crazy, the last fight. I mean, the high kicks were flying around. This is what karate is all about, right? High kicks, beautiful, Moeshi Yoda Gears. Those are mean front house kicks to the head. Yeah. Loving it. We, of course, have got our main event up next as we start the preview for that fight. Let's go ahead. Leila Anneli is talking to our league president, Mr. Adam Kovac. Adam, we have two very different fighters in our title fight. Edgar Scrivers, a very cold, calculated fighter. Bruno Assis, a very stereotypically Brazilian, happy, light fighter. How do you see their styles marrying up? I mean, I can't wait this fight to happen because they're so different in terms of their styles. Scrivers is always charging, going forward. And Bruno is really good in keeping the distance. We could see before when he fought uh, Teak Silva, everybody thought that Teak Silva, with his experience, gonna outclass him, and that didn't happen. Bruno won that fight. He won three of his fights last season. So we're really looking forward to see what he can do against Scrivers. And how did this fight match up? Because we've got our reigning defending champion. How did Bruno prove himself to have this opportunity? Yeah, I mean, uh, Bruno was is, is our road diamond. You know, he came to our promotion back in 2019 in Orlando as a qualifier, right? He won that fight, and since then he's undefeated. So he won three of his fights at season season two, and uh, he's always ready. He always want to fight, and he was asking for the title shot. So we had to make it, and also Scrivers when Scrivers saw how Bruno competed in the last season. He said like. I want to fight this guy. Oh, he said that as well. Did. I didn't know that. Well, it's exciting. It's coming up. It's our title fight. Thank you. Thank you. 68 kilo golden belt on the line. Boss, let's just have a chat about these <laughs> two competitors. Our champion, Mr. Edgar Screevers. This guy is absolutely relentless. He is, he is just a terminator in there. He really is. He said, I might not be the best in shape. I might not be the best technician, but nobody is mentally tougher than me. Constant pressure, you rarely see him move backwards. And the crazy thing is, he said last time out, he reckoned he was at about 40% of what he can do. Yeah, and then his trainer said 20. You know, <laughs> and I go, oh, okay, the whole back here, guys. Let's see what happens tonight first. Uh, he, of course, has a very tough challenger in Mr. Bruno Assis, 4-0, undefeated here on Karate Combat, and this guy always brings the action and always brings the power. Well, he's kind of like the Hulk, because he says that when he gets hit, he transforms that energy into fuel for his counters. The more he gets hit, the more aggressive he gets. Let's see if he's actually right. 
Yeah, this is going to be an outstanding bout. Mr. Robin Black, what have you got for these two gentlemen tonight? It is Hollywood in the 80s, and it is the Karate Combat 68 kilogram belt and golden belt. Man, I'm excited about it. Let's get right into the footage and look at these two brilliant artists. Bruno Assis, as, uh, as our president mentioned, he manages distance extremely well, and he intercepts very, very well. Look here, he'll catch this kick, moving towards it to fill that space and then throw the right hand over top. Now, the right hand isn't just a punch. It will reach across to the shoulder and sweep contralateral angle from the shoulder to the leg to sweep his man to the ground. His finish that we're about to show you is sublime. Looks like a one, two, one, two, one, two. But if you look closely, look at the left paw and look at the way he uses it. It's not just a jab. The left hand will come in and watch as he grabs the defensive systems of his opponent and pulls it down to fire off that right hand. Then the left hook, another right hand, and look at this last sequence. This is a thing of beauty. Pulls to open the corridor and feed him the knuckles. Big. Awesome, awesome stuff. Now, if we look at his opponent, man, this is the champion of the world, the Karate Combat Lightweight World Champion, and this man is an artist. He's out here painting pictures, writing songs, and he's doing it violently. Here he's manipulating order and chaos. At distance, it's chaos. And in tight, it's order. Look what he does here. Manages the outside of the mitt, and that's controlling, making sure he's not gonna get hit. And now with a small push, he'll create the gap that he needs to paint this man right big, right on the cheek. Perfectly set up. And then he's improvisational and innovative in real time, fighting in a state of play. Look, the spinning back fist here, and you're trying to figure out, you're trying to anticipate what he's doing. Yes, you could punch here. Yes, you could kick from here, but you're not expecting big, the rolling thunder from falling from the sky and attacking in a downward arc. You think it's over as the round is coming to an end, and of course, again, any number of attacks could come here, but you're not expecting this one. Sweet, sweet art. These two are gonna go at it, and it is going to be beautiful. Beautiful indeed. It is now time for the main event here at Karate Combat. The challenger, Bruno Assis, taking on the champion, Edgar Grievous. I'm Edgar the Bear Slayer Screevers, and I'm fighting out of Latvia. I'm fighting a hungry and aggressive Brazilian. He's undefeated. He's number one in the line. You line them up, and I smash them. For me, I don't have a particular one favorite technique. For me, the ultimate goal is having no technique as technique. You're gonna see another level for the bear slayer. Olá pessoal, meu nome é Bruno Assis, eu sou do Brasil, conhecido aqui como o Dragão Branco do Karate Combate e estou pronto para lutar pela Golden Belt do Karate Combate. Nesta luta eu vou fazer o meu melhor, do começo ao fim, mostrar toda a garra e determinação do povo brasileiro, mostrar como nós somos guerreiros e não vou desistir até o final. Essa luta vai ser nossa, eu tenho certeza disso e vou fazer o meu melhor dentro do pit. Karate Combat is making Karate great, especially when the Bear Slayer enters the pit. E no futuro, quero que as pessoas se lembrem do meu nome, tenho orgulho da história que eu passei, dos desafios que eu superei para chegar até aqui e representar o povo brasileiro da melhor forma. It's gonna be a good, explosive and exciting fight and you should definitely tune in. Exciting is this title fight. The champion, Mr. Edgar Grievers, and the White Dragon, and the challenger, Mr. Bruno Assis. And as you can see already, the roars <laughs> preceding his entrance through the portal. Man. Here we see 10 of the take for our champion, Mr. Edgar Screevers, 3-0, undefeated here at Karate Combat. Absolutely wilts his opponents with pressure. And once again here at Karate Combat, Bruno Assis, 4-0, undefeated here at Karate Combat. He's going to have a very slight height and reach advantage over the champion tonight. 
Yeah, with the fighting style of Screevers, pushing, fighting in close is not going to help. <laughs> it's certainly not. <laughs> but he can control the distance really well. So. Final instructions from our referee, Mr. Mark Goddard. We're going to get this one underway. This title fight tonight is brought to you by Natural Light. Go grab yourself a natty. Five five-minute rounds on the clock. Should they need them, of course. And it has started. Oh, yeah. And immediately underway, Southpaw stance for the champion. We rarely see him take a backward step. He might do this on purpose. <laughs> Get inside the head of the opponent, because if you think he's constantly attacking and suddenly he doesn't. Well, as he's keeping his guard very high, very wary. Oh, those are good kicks. Ooh, good power from Assis on the return, though. There we go. And there we go. Screever starts moving forward, starts <laughs> yeah. pressuring. It's cutting off the angles quickly, isn't it? Just really not giving them a way out. You don't give him time to breathe, nothing. A couple of shots hit the guard of Assis, but Assis lands a nice combination himself. Oh, nice left hand there, connected. Got the head popping back. Assis. What I thought was particularly interesting about uh, Screever's pass when we spoke to him was he said he doesn't ever think of himself as the champion. He always imagines he's still the challenger. It's his way of making sure he stays hungry to defend that belt. That's a good way of thinking. Oh, nice uppercut there. Oh, yeah. Assis. Again, we talk about timing. Screever's firing back very quickly once as he starts launching his own combination. There's a nice dig to the body there from the Brazilian. That, that's the second one he throws. It's nice. Because normally you don't see them when there's an open stance. I mean, if there's one thing we know that Screevers never has a problem with, it's a gas tank. But maybe early work to the body from Assis will put a dent in that. And it certainly seems like it's part of the game plan right now. 100%. <laughs> Good. Fainted each other out there, but it's a nice jab from... Another right oh, hand. Beautiful left, left hand. hand as well. Yep. That's the third time he re uh, connects. There we go, starting to get a cease covering here. Ooh, lovely kick up the open side. That opposing stance just opens up for the power leg. Into the last 40-ish seconds of this round. Nice, nice right hook there. Around the defense from Screevers. Oh! Covered up that entry to the kick so nicely with the hands. You always talk about setting it up, Bass, okay. and that is picture perfect. That's the way to do it. Blend it in. Keep it busy with defending and then throw the kick. Now, he's throwing with a lot of power himself there, but just finding the guard. And again, that rear kick comes up the open side. Nice body kick there. Oh, the last one. 10 seconds of round number one. Spinning back kick. He's got caught mismanaging the distance there. Round number one in the books. Bass, any initial thoughts on those first exchanges? Uh, well, we already did the game plan that you said. You know, there's a lot of body shots, hooks in the body, especially liver shots coming from Assis. Uh, so that is part of the game plan. Expect him, like in the second round, maybe to set it up uh, for a high kick or a high punch. Here we see some action from round number one. Yeah, take a look at some of the replays here. There were some Boom. lovely combinations That's for a... both men. Screevers landed a couple of very clean kicks, though. Boom, another left hand. And I think this was the most significant shot. Yeah, lets him dip into it. And we can see there some damage on the body of Edgar Screevers. Clearly some of the, the short digging hooks from Bruno Assis doing, uh, doing some damage early here. I mean, it's a long-term strategy, isn't it, really? It is. You know, and especially later in the round, then it's when, when it becomes really effective. Fellow karate combat fighter Williams Carino in the corner of Bruno Assis as they descend back into the pit for round number two. Another three minutes on the clock here. Boom. Great counter there by Assis, but right away Screef has gone forward again. Yeah, he pins him against the corner so quickly. Assis firing back, but you see just followed by Screevers, constantly monitoring that distance and keeping him pressed against that incline. And it's such a Kyokushin style, you know, very close to your opponent. It's fighting in the phone booth, I always say. 
Most of the time, they plant their feet in front of them, and both they fight like that when you see a Kikushi match. Nobody gives up space. Whoa, beautiful. Nice left again. Oh, lovely oh. switch to the trip. That Completely nice. disguised the entry. That was really nice. And look how cool he stays. You know, not afraid of the up kicks, total control. I mean, you very rarely see very clean uh, Osotogaris like that, and that was beautifully done. Just exchanging short shots in, winging uppercut from Screevers. Looking for a different angle. He's constantly moving, so smart. But you know, Assis can kick from close distance as well. He needs to watch out. Don't get overconfident. Reaching the halfway point in this second round. Screevers actually putting a lot of power into each of these shots here. Starting to throw a few more pouring jabs now. Nice short right uppercut there. Do you think Assis is starting to look a little bit tired, perhaps? He's seeming slightly labored in some of his some of his strikes. He's throwing with so much intention in each shot. Oh, nice Superman one again. Punch. I mean, we talk about the unpredictability of Screevers. He said sometimes he, even he doesn't know what he's going to do. Nice kick from Bruno to just catch the timing on that lead leg. Take the base out. Nice liver kick by Screevers. You know, one thing about fighting Edgar Screevers is even if you win, even if you win, you're going to be very, very sore the next day. Yeah. Well, at this time, I think uh, Screevers will be sore as well. Look at the side of his body. It's more and more becoming red. Oh, but again beautiful. with the trip. Man. Beautiful entry. What a, what a timing. Yeah, he's, just, he's, got, he's got a cease convinced that he's going to strike up top, so he covers, and it just opens up the very clean outside trip. Tying his belt, just walking through while he's tying it. He's so in control. About 15 seconds left in this round here. As the shot goes winging over the head of the champion. That little light sweep, it's so smart what he does. Everything to throw his opponent off balance. Again, Look at the that. Superman punch. The rocked him. Yeah, landed very cleanly. Oh, he's yeah. winging huge punches here. Lovely frame on the face from Screevers as round number two ends. And great takedown defense, you see one? The way he stopped that scroll is how he's pulled. Bass, do you feel the momentum starting to shift a little bit here? Yeah, I think he slowly but surely start to take over here. You see the timing, also that back kick that we just saw on that distance to throw a kick like that is very hard to do, but see Bruno C still working the body here. That's where he's had a lot of success. That was a nice time sweep. And the Superman punch, very unexpected, Buff. but very clean. Wow. There we see the corner of Bruno Assis wearing some damage. As he receives some advice from Williams Carino. Edgar Screevers in his corner has not taken the stool here. You know, we, we talk about it a lot, but he said he is, he believes he is the mentally strongest fighter on the entire roster. And right now I'm inclined to believe him. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very hard not to believe him. Into the third round here. If they go past that, we'll enter the championship rounds. Edgar Screevers and Bruno Assis contesting the 68 kilo Karate Combat Golden Belt. Yeah, that's what I like the most, you know. Imagine the belt he's wearing, that's what I really would go after. I think it's even cooler than the regular belt. Absolutely. Screevers again looking to mix it up with facing to the feet as well. Nice open high kick. Yeah, the next one might go to the body, you know, make him think it's another high kick and then it's a liver kick. Yeah, he didn't really see any high kicks in the second round from him, actually, so he switched the tactic up a little Whoa. bit. That's a nice combination. Up and got straight. Wow. Yeah, walking Assis backwards. Nice Assis from Assis. Is, yeah, yes. he fires lovely tight punches, yep. though. That was nice. The left hook cross landed just a minute before, seconds before. It's like Lomachenko, he's tapping him a few times and then he comes with a big punch, Screevers was. Yeah, Screevers just kind of walks his way in with that covered guard, doesn't he? And he seems to find his way in almost every time. It's like he sees everything coming. Another left. Screevers actually moved this entire camp due to the restrictions in, in Latvia. He moved uh, his camp to TK MMA in Dubai and said he really enjoyed 
the experience there. He was finding the weather and helping him recover from training much better than it would have been in the uh, the cold of Latvia. Latvia. Yeah, you got an injury there. <laughs> You're going to feel it. <laughs> well, he's still marching. The Ooh. Brazilian down here, pressing him back against the edge of the wall. Yes, he should load up a little bit less so he's faster because he's... He's telegraphing. He's, That's throw, he's throwing thing. so much into every yep. single punch. And you don't need to because Screevers is not doing that. You see, he's just punches and punches. Just landing, landing, landing. That was almost another trip. Yeah, a lot of volume from Screevers as we expected. Into the final minute here. Nice. Long jab there. Massis. Grievers again marching forward. The aggression Good. is just continuous. Up, up, something straight. we rate so highly on the judges' scorecards oh. here at Karate Combat, that effective aggression moving forward and striking. Yeah, like I said in the opening, you rarely see him move backwards. If he moves backwards, it's just to let somebody miss, but that's it. For the rest, he will come. I see still digging to the body. Nice, letting him miss, coming back. He's very good at rolling and shifting as our champion. Even when it seems like he's right there. Oh, oh good spinning back kick as he fires back. Loving oh. hook shots. Oh. And he just walks away, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. There's no emotion whatsoever, right? End I of round it. number three. We are going to go to the championship rounds here at Curati Combat. Let's take a look at some of the action from that third round. Boom, nice body kick there by Assis. But gets countered because it's a single kick. And here's some more body shots from Assis where he's had perhaps the most success so far. Oh, that was a nice kick. Very good controlled. Also, he didn't keep spinning, which is a hard thing to do with that kick. One shot of our champion there in his corner. Once again, choosing to not take the stool here. By contrast, Bruno Assis is getting his arms shaken out by his corner men. That lactic acid starting to build up. As you said, Bass, throwing a lot of energy into each and every shot is the Brazilian. Yep. Screevers, as soon as that 10 second warning goes, he is already back in the pit. He's ready to press on. His domination. Everything is to impress your opponent. Constantly pressure. Championship rounds here brought to you by Natural Light. Go get yourself a natty. Bruno Assis and Edgar Screevers. Two more rounds if they need them. Screevers again pressing forward. But body shot again. Yeah, body. It's going to build up. You should do what Tyson does. Right hook to the body, right uppercut. Because with an open stance like that, uppercuts thrown with the backhand are very effective. Both of them, though. Nice high kick. Nice kick to the body there by Assis. You see? He never takes his eyes off his opponent, does he? He's constantly, even when he's moving, even when he's throwing, he's always engaged forward. Nice straight left there. But you know, Assis just connected just before this whole sequence with the left hook, and it was because he wasn't loading up. And they connected with that, so he should do that more often. That was nice from Assis again. He's got to watch out there. Beautifully good defense by the Assis. Yeah, Screamers wasn't going to accept being bullied there. He's uh, pushed Assis around. Trying to make sure oh, his, nice his opponent left. always has his back against and the again. wall. Wow, he's landing those crosses the whole time. I think he's used to throw it right hook to the body with left hook to the head. Boom, boom. One, two. There's a screw shot from Assis. And again, the punch is oh, becoming nice a bit more labored now. As you see, his head snapped back by the champion. Yep. Nice. Still great head movement there by Screevers. Letting him miss. And Bas, how much more tiring is it when you're throwing all these shots and they don't connect? That's, they say, is the most tiring ever. You know, missing point punches. Mo missing when you throw with power. So many people say, yeah, the shadow boxing should be tired. No, because you control it. But once you expect a target and it's gone, that's when you get tired and you miss. Minute left in this fourth round here. Nice, you said that was what I said. The right hook to the body, left hook to the head, and he connected with it. There we go, nice Beautiful. back kick. As he wow. fires back, and let me tell you, you are not going to get either of these competitors out of this pit easily. Both willing to go out on their shield here.
Wow, very short, nice punches, bobbing yeah, and weaving. Bob and wow, weave. we're not a left counter connecting. Yeah, he's using some lovely Western style boxing here as our champion. And Brit begging his face the whole time. Yeah, I mean, credit to Assis. He's still throwing oh. back and he's, he's still staying in it, but the volume and the, the forward pressure from Screever is just relentless. Yeah, she'll do that again. The right hook to the body, left hook to the head. It connected both of them. Beautiful back kick after a combination. Oop, okay, why not take him down? <laughs> wow, it's almost like he knows what's going to come, right? Well, he he's ducks every... He's reading kick. them so effectively, isn't he? Look at him, he's so tired. One more round to go here at Karate Combat. And as you said, Bass, he doesn't look tired. I had to laugh when we were in the interviews and he said, you know what, some people might have better cardio than me. And the whole time I'm just sitting there thinking, are <laughs> yeah, you kidding? Liar. Are you kidding? <laughs> Let's <laughs> take a look at yeah. some of the replays here. And again, Bruno had some success with the body oh. shots, but Screevers with these high kicks just over and over. I love it. Letting him miss, coming back. Boom, look at that back kick. And again, it's Ushiro Giri. And the way it's not an Ushiro Mawashi, it's an Ushiro. There's a back kick. It's very hard to control the way he does it. Most of the time when people spin, they keep on spinning with the kick. So when they miss, they, 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 they miss the kick. But not with him. If people move backwards, he still connects because it's straight backwards. Well, will this be one of the first times that our champion, Edgar Screevers, is going to go the distance here? He's been through three rounds before on one of our shows, but uh, five he has not. Both his previous his title win and his first title defense against Luis Roker and Mirza Tebuev were knockout victories. But Bruno Assis is as tough as they come. Oh, yes. He's also not tired coming. More tired, I think, than Screevers, but he's still in the fight. I mean, uh, he, you know, he did tell us he had no complaints about his preparation. He felt like he was very ready. He had a great nice fight right camp. hand there, landing by him. So that's a good sign. No, prep no problem. He's in shape. Yeah, I mean, coming into a five-round title fight, you, you know, you need the best preparation possible. And both these gentlemen, you know, feel they've accomplished that. Just ducking out of the way again, forcing a cease to miss. But he goes to the body once more. Wow, oh, connected nice with right the right. Oof. And nice left again. Boom, another right hook. Left, another left. Wow, he's landing on command now. Yeah, he is. It's, just, that. it's just volume, isn't it? Two minutes left again, ducking, diving. Wow. It is so crazy. I've just got to wonder how can Bruno Assis control his breathing here? Oh. Left to the body. Assis threw again, the hook to the body, left it to the head and connected with it. Oh, beautiful. Man. One minute and 26 seconds left here. I think we're just going to see more of the same from Edgar Screevers. I mean, it, it, it's like the same as the first round. I mean, and the same same power, same everything. <laughs> There's almost no difference. There's yet no with. difference. He doesn't get tired. 15 Look. minutes of fighting later on. Unreal. Oh, he <laughs> just made a pirouette. I think he wanted to make a back fist and realized it's not there. I'll just make a pirouette. Oh, short right uppercut. He's looking for that liver shot. Screevers is. Again, he never takes oh. his eye off his opponent. He just throws the combination he wants, uh, anticipates the opponent's reaction, and does the same thing again. It's, it's fantastic to see. Oh, man. Left, right, left hook again. Ooh, half a minute. Oh, right yeah, hand landed, there, though. and another one. But he so never stops throwing. As this is uh, super oh, tough. There we have the card kick. kick. <laughs> Kings. Always nice to see a rolling thunder. Yep. <laughs> Got 15 seconds left here. Time for one more big exchange. Spinning kick missed by Assis. Takedown for Screevers. 10 seconds. And that is probably going to see the time out here as we come back to the feet. <laughs> Screevers hears the bell, <laughs> but he does not care. Last 10 second. seconds left. He's still going to get one more strike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's going to say, you watch, he's going to say when he's talking to Leila that uh, 
that he's going to be distressed because he didn't uh, stop him. <laughs> you watch. Well, let's take a look at some of the replays here, Bass, from that round. Again, Screevers non-stop with the shots. Boom, boof, body shot. Look at that. Man, boom, look at uppercut hook. Give him high kick. I mean, rolling thunder. But Aziz just took everything and was constantly coming back. Yeah, I mean, you know, Aziz was still in this fight right Ex to the end. I mean, incredibly tough performance from him, but it's hard to argue with the volume and the forward aggression of our champion, Edgar Scrivers. And I think, Bass, on balance, you and I probably both feel that he's done enough here oh. to retain this title belt. Yeah, that will be a complete shocker if he doesn't. But it's impossible, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, let's head down into the pits and uh, find out who's going to keep hold of that golden belt. Ladies and gentlemen, we have your winner by unanimous decision, in the red corner, Edgar Scrivers! Like and still! <laughs> still the champion, Mr. Edgar Scrivers, his second successful title defense there. He was actually, he's the first ever Karate Combat Golden Belt champion, and he remains so with another fantastic performance. God here. Very religious person. Yes, indeed he is. Taking a moment for himself here. And he is going to grab a few words with our hostess, Layla Annalee. I love the way he talks. Congratulations on a very offensive, very aggressive performance. Even though you were the reigning champion, you really took it to him, didn't you? First of all, I want to say, Alhamdulillah, Everything from Allah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no power, no strength, except God. Alhamdulillah. Second of all, yes, exactly, it was like that. My mindset was here, that I came as a challenger, and I didn't defend my belt. My mindset was to attack, attack, and again, attack. Alhamdulillah. You also spoke prior to this fight that here on Karate Combat we haven't seen more than 20 or 40% of you. How about tonight? I want to be humble because of the opponent. He was striking with me all five rounds. It wasn't easy to finish him. It's just my time. I'm more experienced. I'm the greatest fighter ever. And after, he's going to gain only experience from this. This, this was my... 25% as always as I do my sparring we do it 20 20% 20 this was 25% well congratulations merely at 25% our lightweight champion Edgar Strivers congrats thank you most of all I just I'm just grateful for opportunity to compete thank you Oh. Well, I think the uh, the lightweight division here, Bash, should be very, very afraid if they weren't already. <laughs> uh, let's take a look back at some of the moments from that championship bout. Well, well, there's going to be a lot of moments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Edgar, Edgar Strieber's oh. relentless Bull pressure. Head kick, splat in the face. Mixed up his target area so much. Unreal. The way he timed that. Well, let's just talk about those two trips that he threw in as well. Unreal, that's what I mean. You never really knew what was going to come your way. Oh, it was anything oh, and everything. Oh, I mean, connecting, connecting. There, look at that back fit. Beautiful, Ushiro Giri. And a beautiful takedown. Boof, oh, back kick first to the body. There we go. Look at that. Coming under the knees, just grabbing, taking him down, putting him on his back. And of course, we had the crazy cartwheel kick. You know, we're pretty sure we're going to see that. There we go. Splash. To the center of the spine almost with the heel. Wow, Bass, what a performance from our champion, Edgar Screevers. Uh, he said to us beforehand, I wouldn't want to fight me because I don't know how I would beat me. How do you beat the guy? Uh, well, you got a boatload of stamina you need and you need to press forward. It's a constant. You got to do the same thing back against him, but he's just so good at it because the only time when he moves backwards is when he lets you miss. He will never move. He will never let you push him backwards. He simply doesn't do that. You know, so even if you want it, he will have an answer for that. He bobs and weaves, lets misses, counters. Everything is an attack and it doesn't go full power. He just punches and punches and landing perfectly. Those straight punches he's destroying. How many did he land? It's an insanity. <laughs> <laughs> 30 of them constantly on the button on the button the body 
I'm just mesmerized by him. And what do you think um, Bruno Assis can take away from, from this fight? Because he, he stuck in it till the end, but uh, unsuccessful. Yeah, well, no, pretty much nobody have that done that with the, with the champion yet. So I, I think he can take a lot. He can take away from the fight that he is a champion, that he is a dragon, because this guy hang in there was still dangerous in the last round, even though he was tired, but he was still throwing with power. So, yeah, no, I, there's, there was no loss to him. Going the distance with Screamers, I think it's big. You know, we're having a good time here in the 80s. We have, and we're hard for, uh, for one more week. So uh, what are no. we going to do? Uh, how about Arcade? Oh, Arcade, I love it. Oh, Galaga, remember that game? Oh, the one ship, you got psst, psst, where you're shooting, and then those beams comes down, brrr, picks up the ship. You can attack I'm going to keep feeding side. him some quarters. You join us next week here on Karate Combat. For myself, Josh oh, Palmer, Bass Rutten, Leila Annalee, and some guy in a leopard print jacket. We'll see you next time.